Today I have the pleasure of speaking with Malcolm Mason of Hastings Rare Metals. How are you today? I'm very well, thank you. Um, I want to start by congratulating you. You've just put out major milestone news here this week. Can you tell us about your new resource announcement and hit us with the highlights, please? Well, the highlight is that uh, we now have uh, over 12 million tons of resource and uh, within that uh, there's over 130,000 tons of rare earths. But maybe the key item is to uh, in my belief, you need to get to a certain value in your project. And we have approximately $5 billion worth of uh, rare earth metals in the ground on our project now. Okay. If that doesn't get everyone's interest, I don't know what will, Malcolm. So let me back you up a little bit. For everyone out there who may not be familiar with Hastings, Yangabana project, can you give us an overview of this project? Yeah, Yangebana is about 300 kilometres uh, from the coast in the Gascoigne region and uh, it covers around 650 square kilometres. We have outcropping mineralisation over a distance of more than 50 strike kilometres. Much of the ore is quite shallow and uh, it looks as though the metallurgy is going to come out very nicely for us. Okay, well let's get right to the metallurgy because uh, uh, this is a 39-page news release, so we have a lot of exciting nuggets in here. Uh, first and foremost, of course, Hastings is, special, is targeting uh, four of the uh, most high-priced rare earths or technology metals. Uh, can you talk to us specifically about those four metals and what you found in uh, your uh, most recent uh, uh, drilling program? In terms of uh, the main metals for us, neodymium, praseodymium are the main metals. They uh, uh, supply about 85% of the value of the uh, mineralization, and we have dysprosium and also europium. Well, I think what I'm going to ask you next, of course, is uh, you've done uh, a significant amount of drilling here in the last year. Can you tell me uh, what the plan of action is with this drilling program and what you're planning on doing next? Well, as part of the PFS and along with a host of other things we're doing, uh, we will issue a report or a PFS report by about March of next year. That means we have to cover a whole host of items, uh, too many to note, but uh, maybe as a point of the detail, we've identified potable drinking water sufficient to uh, supply a mine of more than a million tonnes per annum for as long as you would want in an area that was previously considered to be a desert. Okay, you know, March, that's that's like tomorrow. <laughs> You're going to have your pre-feasibility study done by March? I'm, I'm guessing the end of March because we're only talking uh, half a year here. Well, hopefully it will be a little before, but uh, we believe uh, certainly by the end of March. and. In terms of how long we've been at it, it's really only, what, 18, just over 18 months uh, that we've been uh, exploring. So for us, uh, that's quite a long time. All right. Well, I was about to say that's not a, lo a long time in the rare earth uh, uh, life cycle. Uh, so can you tell me why your teams managed to move so quickly here uh, since Charles Liu uh, took over in, uh, in end of 2013, early 2014? We have a very small team and they're very efficient, very effective. Uh, we only have two employees, the rest of us work part time. But it also allows us to uh, gain access to the very best consultants and, uh, around the world. So it means that uh, we can pull them in very quickly, they can look after their specific areas and we can put together the PFS very, very quickly. Of course, the PFS is a very costly venture. What does that cost, uh, Malcolm? Uh, for us, it'll be under six and a half million dollars, which is quite tiny by most people's standards. And uh, we look as though we won't be going over budget. Okay, well, that's also very impressive. Of course, uh, Hastings has been able to raise money over the last year, which very few uh, rare earth companies have been able to do due to the market conditions. Can you tell me uh, whether or not or how you plan on securing the funds for the PFS? Uh, much along the same lines. Uh, we're not looking at vast sums of money. 
Uh, we're not exactly sure yet. We won't know until the end of the PFS, but we would believe it's going to be less than $15 million. And uh, we'll be looking around for uh, maybe some special interested parties. And, of course, the shareholders are certainly still very keen to support us. So um, not much different to what we've been doing today. So Hastings really, for those of you out there at Investor Intel who are new to Hastings, is really a neodymium project. Is that how you describe yourself or Malcolm? Please correct me. Uh, spot on. And in fact, I mean, 80% of uh, the value comes from the neodymium. So there's no other way to look at it except that it is a neodymium prospect or project. Now, I believe there's some real significant competitive advantages in the Hastings Yangabana project, if I recall, from, uh, uh, from reviewing this project over the years. Can you tell our audience a little bit more about these advantages? I guess it's mainly because it's shallow, shallow dipping, and uh, it outcrops over vast areas. Uh, the cost of mining is very small. Our beneficiation has been exceptionally good. Uh, we are able to have uh, flotation concentrates of between 20 and 25 percent, and uh, our hydro network is looking very good at the moment. So all in all, assuming that we don't have any issues in the latter part of the metallurgy, uh, we look as though we've got a very good chance of going into the bankable feasibility study. Okay, well that's very exciting. And also I believe I read reference to a couple of clean tech initi initiatives. Can you tell us a little bit more about these? Well, it's interesting that we're out in the middle of the desert. I mean, it is open uh, terrain, almost flat, and it's ideal to put in a, a solar power station. And the concept there is uh, for a relatively small investment, uh, we would save a, a very large amount uh, of diesel that would normally go into a power plant. The other one is that uh, we use quite a lot or will be using quite a lot of uh, um, alkali and uh, hydrochloric acid and we're looking very seriously about producing that on site with a chlor alkali plant. Well Malcolm, thank you so much for joining us today. I really appreciate the update. It's been a pleasure and uh, I trust that we'll meet again very soon.